what time it is. Marvin Devine, Hoover, Axel, and you know how we do. <laughs> yeah, I got the juice, yeah, I got the juice We game cool, make them look like cool Always play cool, that's the biggest rule Fuck it, what they doing, keep on doing watching from and welcome and i sincerely mean that welcome to another broadcast of kidney hub east africa i am half your host steve the kidney nurse today my god we have a show for you okay we're diving myself and brother moses who i'll bring on in a minute we're diving into a critical topic that affects countless individuals, okay? The disruption of dialysis care. Join us as we explore the challenges, solutions, and strategies for ensuring uninterrupted access to vital dialysis treatment. Now here to help me talk about this critical topic as he is here every week faithfully. And the brother undergoes kidney dialysis, outpatient hemodialysis treatment two times a week, whereas in most places, it's three. So here to help me unpack this critical topic, none other than Brother uh, Moses Kennedy, also known as the Kidney Ambassador. Brother Moses, welcome. Thank you so much. Man, it's good Glad to, to see be you once again. Yes, yes, it's good to see you, man. It, it, it really is. How's your week been? Uh, it's been good. Okay. Uh, 
maybe few challenges at uh, dialysis unit. Yeah, uh, with yeah. my low pressure and whatnot, but we are we keep on going. Yeah, I know. Just like yeah. uh, thousands of other warriors uh, around the world that deal with dialysis, you had some challenges with um, removing fluid and maintaining your blood pressure during treatment. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, right. and, and, and that happens to many people. Do you see other warriors at your facility going through the same issues? Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, because uh, uh, personally, it has never been an issue to me because uh, I don't have, I don't uh, suffer from uh, 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 hypertension. It only happens because uh, I have kidney failure. But then uh, 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 it has never been a challenge before. But uh, towards uh, the end of this year, uh, last year uh, to date, uh, it is a major challenge. Mm. Yeah. Share this live. If you're watching this broadcast right now, whether it's YouTube, Steve and Kenny Nurse Facebook page or the Figo Initiative Facebook page. Share this broadcast. We're about to get into the meat and potatoes of disruption in outpatient hemodialysis and how it can have a serious impact on one's care. And as I mentioned in the beginning, Brother Moses and fellow East African warriors that undergo kidney dialysis, that undergo kidney dialysis, are, uh, are only able to go twice a week. And, and if something was to happen, excuse me, if something was to happen, then they couldn't uh, get their treatment. Brother Moses, talk about that for a minute. Well, uh, uh, there, there are several challenges that uh, 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 that can present itself that uh, uh, can even disrupt your treatment. There are so many, Brother Steve, and I know we are going to mention uh, a few, but there are so many. Back to you, Brother Steve. Uh, Brother Moses, can you elaborate a little bit more? Something came up behind the scene. Can you share um, some of the things that happened at your unit? Uh, well, uh, uh, well, uh, with with uh, with the rains uh, uh, just around the corner and. Uh, Sometimes it rains heavily. Uh, uh, our weak, our weak uh, uh, national grid power. Uh, sometimes uh, just, just, just a simple downpour makes uh, the entire region uh, becomes uh, goes without power. That is blackout, and uh, it really disrupt uh, most units. Um, uh, uh, that do not have uh, maybe uh, power uh, backup. Uh, these include even uh, uh, government facilities. Now, uh, uh, to be specific in my unit, um, uh, I've realized uh, uh, that uh, people sometimes, most majority of them, do not adhere to treatment because lack of uh, uh, transport to uh, to to dialysis. So mm -hmm. this becomes a very big challenge, or lack, or maybe lack of information how serious it is uh, mm -hmm. to miss your treatment. So somebody takes it for granted. Today he comes and feels well, then tomorrow he misses, doesn't come. Right. So, uh, not knowing uh, the danger they are putting into themselves. So that is quite common, Brother Steve. Mm. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Brother Mo. Sorry about that. Hey, got an important call 
behind the scenes that I had to take. But um, let's talk about not only the transportation, because that's one, but let's talk about something that many people run in, where many kidney uh, warriors run into and don't expect. And that's equipment malfunction. I'm sure, Brother Moses, you came to dialysis and maybe they had to delay or postpone your treatment because of equipment malfunction, whether the water system wasn't working or the machines were broken or they didn't have enough machines to accommodate kidney warriors. I've seen this many times. And if you're in the chat, whether it's TikTok or YouTube or Facebook, and this happened to you where your treatment has gotten delayed because of machine uh, malfunction, please comment and let us know. Uh, issues with the dialysis machine is very common. You have some people who have to wait. Hour, no, I ain't going to say hours, but Save your chair time six o'clock. Sometimes they may not get on the seven, depending on the issue with the machine. Um, Brother Moses, has has this ever occurred in your unit? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, machines w- will always malfunction anytime, uh, and in fact, uh, they don't give notice. Uh, so you realize that when this one uh, this uh, malfunction happens or occurs, then uh, uh, the entire schedule is really disrupted because uh, uh, you have to wait longer hours for others to finish because now a uh, uh, patient outnumber uh, the number of machines. That is to say, for example, but uh, uh, it becomes serious when. Uh, when uh, the entire uh, plant is down that is when uh, 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 everybody is affected all right and then and then and then or or the water supply there is shortage in water supply then everybody is uh, affected yes it does happen yeah and, and that's unfortunate because we see that a lot and we know machines break down because they're machine but for machines to break down because of lack of maintenance is something different now in some places this is the case because the biomed is overwhelmed and covering other units and some machines may fall through the cracks and getting the proper maintenance. They call them PM, preventive maintenance. And they schedule every so many hours. That's how they track those machines by the hours they run. And you got machines out there that got over 100,000 hours on them. Let's talk about another disruption that happens, and I'm sure it probably occurs regularly over in East Africa, and that is power outages. Power outages. They, they have them here, but here they got some places backup generators. So loss of electricity can interrupt the dialysis process, potentially leading to complications for the patient. Brother Moses, have your clinic or have you ever since going to dialysis experienced power outage? while on dialysis yes and uh it happens because uh, i've experienced it severally uh, uh, these are sometimes a natural calamity hits there is flooding and the main source is uh, uh the power supply is cut and then um, um and to make it worse just like i've mentioned earlier 
uh, you realize uh, the, the backup generator also uh, probably has a uh, uh, unforeseen uh, uh, issue. So it doesn't work. It takes time also to adjust uh, uh, the backup generator. So it becomes a double strategy. Mm. And Brother Moses, we had a comment uh, from Snap Back to Life, one of the hosts, Kayla. She said, yes, it happened to me earlier this week. Had to completely get set up all over again. Probably it had to set up the lines and restart dialysis again. And this happens. And, and see, this is the thing. Brother Moses, no one talks about this. There's, you know, it, it may happen to them and uh, they don't know who to talk to or where to go to talk about if their uh, treatment got disrupted or impacted. And so this is why we do these type of shows where individuals can come here listen to the information and if they can identify with it then they can share their experience and how they navigated through that process because each year here in the united states each year in the united states brother um Over 750,000 people are diagnosed with kidney failure, kidney disease. And so that's why shows such as this where warriors can identify is crucial. And so the third disruption okay that can cause patients to uh not get treatment is vascular access problems vascular access problems problem with your access now issues with the patient's access or vascular access such as a clot or infection can prevent successful dialysis treatment. Now, I can't tell you how critical this is. When you have individuals that have catheters and you go to dialysis treatment and they put the syringes on and nothing's coming out, and you wonder what's going on. Why the catheter not working today? And now you got to go somewhere and get that repaired. That's disrupting your treatment. That's the treatment disruption. And I've seen people that happen to and miss several days because they couldn't fit them in. And it was the weekend. Brother Moses, have that? Have you experienced that? This I've experienced that due to your access. Oh yes, I have experienced that. Uh, at one time, uh, uh, my access catheter uh, 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 just refused to work completely. Uh, it could not allow uh, uh, the enough speed. Uh, to complete my dialysis. So each time they will try 250, doesn't work. Doesn't work. But then I, I don't know how the magic that in between, but I'm not saying the magic works well. Uh, then come the next dialysis, again, it just kick off and started working. So yes, you, you can experience that. But again, uh, uh, uh you know uh, there are things you can't avoid sometimes it's it's on uh, uh the technician side maybe she forgets to uh uh 
to, to to lock it with enough uh, uh, heparin or something like that, and then you suffer the consequence. So yes, it is something uh, uh, that you would prepared, or or sometimes uh, I've had uh, uh, infection that my catheter uh, could not work, so. Uh, I was given uh, three doses of uh, vancomycin, and then everything was sorted. Mm. Mm -hmm. You say some uh, uh, important. You said that the tech, the technician may have forgot to give you what heparin. Not you, but that's the case. And reason why I touched on that because that's why I always advocate that it's important for kidney warriors that know their dialysis prescription. So if you get uh, heparin, how much heparin do you get? And make sure that you get it or your blood flow rate or your, or, or your pump speed is the same. Because if your pump speed is ordered for 400 and you're only running at 300 or 250 because your catheter not working or your accent wrong with your access and you you didn't know that they turned the blood flow rate down or the pump speed you, you're not getting a good treatment and so at the end of the month when they draw your blood and your ktov your numbers are low and you're wondering why you stayed on your whole time while your numbers are running low. That's where you need to look at your access and if the operator is doing things properly. Which brings us to our next uh, uh, disruption that can cause a disruption and that's staff shortages. Now, I personally experienced that myself, seeing the disruption of a patient's treatment because of staff call out or we short of staff. Hell, I just went through that Friday. Just went through it Friday. And I go to work tomorrow. And it's probably going to be the same thing tomorrow. We running short. Someone called out. So shortages of trained dialysis personnel, such as nurses and techs, uh, can impact the ability to provide dialysis treatment to patients. Now, I'm sure many people who are watching this that undergoes kidney dialysis outpatient I look like you got a party over there. Uh, I said, look like listen, like you having a party over there. I can hear people laughing in the background. No, this is a slum, so uh, everybody's doing his business without minding a neighbor. So the setup is here is very poor. You'll just have to uh, bear with me. Oh, okay. I, I, uh, I, yeah, I, not parties. Others are laughing. Others, you know, are washing dishes. Uh, others are uh, taking care of their young ones. So. Sure, sure. But as I was, as I was saying that yes. uh, uh, thousands of people uh, in the United States who undergo dialysis has possibly experienced staff shortages at their clinic. And if you haven't, you're very, very lucky. Okay. Brother Moses, has that ever happened at your facility, uh, experiencing uh, staff shortages? But I know jobs in, in, in East Africa are... Uh, you know, crucial and one keeping them. But do you, do you experience that at your clinic? 
with staff shortages or staff not coming to work? Well, no, uh, no. But then um, uh, th there is shortage in a way that uh, maybe the ratio is uh, compromised. And, uh, but not that somebody m m doesn't come to work. Um, uh, most facilities, uh, the ratio uh, uh, nurse to patient ratio is not uh, 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 the standard recommended one. So uh, you realize a nurse can be handling uh, maybe maybe six patient, uh, other units. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, so I'm um, just categorical. Uh, not be not because of uh, uh, shortages, but it is because they employ uh, uh, they employ a few to maybe uh, capitalize on uh, 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 profit because for example public hospitals uh, lacks the capacity to 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 employ uh, enough uh, staff uh, when it comes to private hospitals uh, they also uh, cannot employ uh, enough staff because they also want to uh, maximize on uh, on profit and especially at this time uh, here in kenya where most units are closing up nhf is not paying them uh, uh, it's not re nhf is not refunding them so most dialysis units have really closed up and uh, uh, that few that have remained are are not stand alone but uh, uh, hospital based are still just uh, trying to survive so yes uh, it's 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 either way yes yeah and, and i don't have to continue to be this uh be the dead horse to say that here in the united states there's a big staffing shortage uh, of dialysis personnel. Now, here, if the nurse doesn't show up, because you got to have a nurse to open the unit, if the nurse calls out sick at the last minute or doesn't show up, they can't start the dialysis treatment. They can't. Now, I don't know what's the case over in Kenya. If that's the case, if a nurse doesn't show up, the charge nurse that they can't open the unit. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, uh, you know, this one now depends on different uh, uh, facilities. You know, most facilities are run by different uh, individual entrepreneurs, uh, especially, especially the private sector. But uh, uh, in government hospitals, uh, things are a little bit streamlined when it comes to adhering to policy. So uh, because uh, the hospitals are open 24-7, there's no time the hospital is closed. But right. coming, to, coming to private hospital, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yes, anything can happen, including uh, uh, someone absconding job if he gets uh, a Guinea pasta. So let me ask this. Are there any uh, policies for outpatient that uh, the clinics have to follow? Oh, yes, the policies. But now, you know, uh, it all depends with uh, uh, the management of uh, a particular facility. They can all, some can just be, the policies can be uh, just in black and white. Uh, but then who now ensures that uh, 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 the policies are followed? You know, also matters, Brother Steve. That is that is something we, we are suffering from just from the government. It's, it's a culture that really uh, also 
contributes to uh, uh, this kind of disruptions because you will realize the law really states everything clearly, but then it is taken for granted, including court orders. People, uh, you know, mm, uh, uh, do not uh, follow for, uh, court orders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So number five of disruption of dialysis is patient non-compliance. And I'm like, people are like, what? How can that be? Well, you have patients not following their prescribed dialysis schedule or dietary restrictions, that can lead to disruptions in your treatment. Say if a person gets up one morning and just say, I don't feel like going to dialysis. No call, no show. And I've seen it happen many, many times. And we don't know if the person's in a hospital or not. And next thing you know, you see him two weeks later. We didn't stop setting up for him because they didn't call or show up for three or four treatments. Next thing you know, they're walking in the door. That's a disruption in treatment. Now, they don't allow that. If you don't show up, excuse me, for three treatments or have it rescheduled, they make you go to the emergency room now. Because your potassium may be sky high. And they don't want to take that liability or chance of dialyzing someone that hasn't been to treatment in a week. Because three treatments is considered a week. Well, for you, Brother Moses, it's two. Um, do you see that a lot in um, Kenya of kidney warriors not showing up? Or just showing up whenever they want. Oh yes, I've I've seen this so many times. Uh, people don't show up because uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, they are tired of daily routine. Maybe uh, waking up uh, every morning, every Tuesday and Friday, and going to dialysis. You know, it's really a burden. Personally, it's a burden to myself. Uh, uh, other days I can wake as early as five, but on I don't know what happens on the dialysis day. Um, I don't have the 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 morale. I don't have the impetus to wake up quite early. So uh, uh, it is quite common. I've seen so many. Uh, uh, they just for no apparent reason they don't come they you call sometimes i call friends i call them hey are you coming today they're telling me i'm very tired today i'm not coming tired as in you can't walk no i'm just tired coming there <laughs> yes <laughs> so i've seen it brother steve it happens it has happened to myself but uh what keeps me going is uh 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 uh, being informed how serious it is, uh, how this is a, a, a medical emergency that you have to go to the hospital. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, let's talk about the next one that can disrupt treatment. And you talked about it in the beginning. And that was transportation issues. Yes. That's a big one, brother. Transportation issues. Difficulties in getting to the dialysis center, such as lack of transportation or in inclement weather, can result 
and mistreatment. Oh, Dad Vice uh, said, hello. Happy Sunday to you, uh, Dad Vice. Brother Moses, Dad Vice TV said, uh, happy Sunday to you. Ah, uh, happy Sunday. Dad yeah, Vice. appreciate you stopping by, uh, Dad Vice. Y'all guys, if you're watching this, go follow Dad Vice. It's not like he doesn't have enough followers, but he got some great information as well. So transportation issues are big because you have people that start dialysis that may not have transportation and they don't know that they supposed to have it. They may think that the unit provides it. Then they, they get a wake up call. Huh? You don't supply transportation and Medicare doesn't pay for it. And so now here in the United States, you have many people that depend on bus provided by the state, uh, private transportation companies, uh, family, public transportation. And here, I don't know if they have it in Kenya, but Uber and Lyft, if you got that app. And so now in some cities, you get, you know, especially with the um, younger population, if you're on dialysis and you have energy, you can get a scooter, especially if you live in the city. I don't in United States in different cities they got these brother Moses these transportation scooters that one download the app and got their credit card information they could just scooter could be laying up against the wall somewhere they just grab it get on it got the app and and go the point is if you don't have transportation to get to dialysis, that's going to disrupt your treatment. So you got to find dependable transportation. And especially when it's inclement weather. And this is where, as they say, the rubber meets the road when one starts dialysis and the education and they don't know about the different treatment options or like on TikTok and I do lives and they say, what do you think I should do? Home dialysis or in center? This is where the rubber meets the road because these are the things that you have to think about. Because if you go into, into in center, you're going to come across some of these disruptions even at home but at least at home you have control of the situation to a certain degree you don't have control of the power outage that happens outside of your house but on the other side you get have a generator. Brother Moses, how serious is transportation issue over for kidney warriors in, in Kenya and afar? Uh, it is quite serious. Uh, uh, serious in the sense that uh, uh, it wholly depends on uh, 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 financial uh, preparedness because uh, uh, you need to pay your uh, sometimes you know most uh, uh, brother Steve most uh, uh, dialysis uh, patient do not have a source of income and most of them comes from uh, uh, 
humble background. So uh, uh, they also depend on maybe well wishers or uh, willing relatives that might give an hand. So it is unpredictable that uh, uh, tomorrow you might not make it to dialysis. Reason being, uh, uh, you lack uh, the money to uh, to pay for your transport. That is maybe even if it means Uber or or uh, Uber rides, uh, you know, or any other uh, public means. So yes, it can happen in that way. That is the most common one. Then number two, uh, the most common one also is uh, 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 poor, uh, 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 poor uh, public transport system uh, that is observed across East Africa. Uh, uh and kenya being having the worst of it because uh they don't mind that there there could be sick people in that in that bus so like you're in a hurry you are late uh they want you to alight first because they are rushing to pick the next uh the next one the next stage so uh, it really, it is a big challenge. It is a big challenge, transport sector. Uh, it is a big challenge, Brother Steve. Mm -hmm. You know, Brother Moses, I was just sitting there thinking while you was talking about that. I was listening to you. And I was thinking about an article that I seen and I was going to talk about last night. And you know the conflict that's happening between Israel and Hamas that's happened over in uh in Gaza Strip, right? Now they got kidney warriors there as well, brother Moses. And you know how many kidney warriors have been displaced? They had to they were getting treatment up in the north, and then Israel made them displace them and move down to the south. And they saying that they don't have enough dialysis machines. They went from 24, they down to like 24 machines and they trying to dialyze thousands of people. A lot of, a lot of us don't think about it because it's not happening to us. You know, and they got to get their treatment time cut so other people could come in and get their treatment. So where once they used to get four-hour treatment, now they only could get an hour to two hours. It's ridiculous, it's brother. Sad. It's really quite sad because the last time I checked uh, about Palestine, uh, 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 dialysis units in uh, Palestine news, uh, they were saying the the entire country had fourteen, um, uh, uh, and this fourteen, everything was disrupted from uh, that is that is one month ago. Uh, that is from the water supply. You know, uh, even the water supply uh, comes steadily from uh, Israel to uh, to 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 Hamas to 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 Palestine. Yeah because there is co coexistence between uh, the two countries uh, having been neighbors. So uh, you realize that uh, if there is uh, some quarter uh, power is cut and uh, water is also cut. Uh, so definitely I know most of warriors must have lost their lives. Yes, because you need power and water to do dialysis unless you're doing peritoneal. Mm -hmm. And that can be done manually. Mm -hmm. This is how and even, this even, it, 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 even even the staff, even the staff, the personnel itself, it, it's displaced. The machine could be there, uh, everything could be there, the facility could be up to date. But now who takes care of that? 
nobody if people are displaced and people are operating in fear especially no staff other steam. yes it is and uh it's really unfortunate yeah and i want to yeah. just pick i just want to go back and talk about a comment that dad vice uh said and thank you dad vice uh, for this. He said, I just saw in Southern Cal how an entire bus system closed with no warning, leaving people scrambling to find transportation, some of which required leaving three extra hours early. So just imagine if, if you were on dialysis and you depended on uh, the transportation system in Southern Cal, now you got to find other ways to get the treatment. And what if you got to get up three extra hours early just to get to dialysis on time? And these are the stories you don't hear about. These are some of the warriors that suffer in silence. M. Foster says, sadly, CKD and ESRD, also known as end-stage renal disease, have been... Uh, table many times until its affects you or your family the learning that is required for so many that have no medical background leaves many feeling helpless now thank you for that m foster because again that's where shows like this kidney hub east africa or steve the kidney nurse or uh, brother moses does his advocacy that's where we try to, um, when we give information, it's in layman terms. Try to get to the point where a, a five-year-old can understand. Uh, and so it's just a point of <laughs> reeling them in and, and getting the uh, warriors head to the table to hear such information and look i know people don't want to hear this all the time but when you have certain situations come up that you may not understand and know about this is where this type of information is critical but yes you can always come back and replay the broadcast but thank you for that comment Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining P Teach. We definitely appreciate you guys. M Foster, Dad Vice, and uh Snap Back to Life, who is uh, which is also a kidney advocacy broadcast. Snap back to life. Check them out. Um, so brother Moses, let's move on because we still gotta talk about the solutions. Uh the last one which impacts a lot of people financial barriers find the financial barriers lack of insurance coverage or financial resources can prevent patients from receiving the necessary dialysis treatment i've seen that firsthand Financial barriers. If somebody don't have money for transportation, they're not coming to dialysis. If they don't have their own transportation or dependable transportation, it goes back to the number six, transportation issues. Some people may not have insurance coverage. But here in the United States, if you're diagnosed with kidney disease, you automatically will get Medicare. Now, I'm not sure how that works in East Africa. Brother Moses, how do insurance coverage apply over in Oh, Kenya? well, we have, we have two categories of insurance. Uh, number one is uh, the government insurance. That is the National Hospital Insurance Fund. But in future, uh, they are planning to change it to be uh, 
social hospital insurance fund now and then category number two we have uh, uh, the private uh, insurance firms that we that also provides uh, their uh, uh, their product to uh, especially the middle class the working middle class so if you don't fall within the working middle class you might not be in a position to afford it so yes uh, uh, that is how insurance works so majority of population you know of course uh, 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 are not uh, uh, working uh, middle class here in Kenya Kenya is uh, uh, is uh, is is not a developed country Mm. Mm -hmm. so if one is not in working class and they get kidney disease do they automatically um um get coverage from the nhs or they gotta apply for it actually uh uh brother steve let me tell you something um uh, most uh warriors that happen to 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 be diagnosed with kidney failure uh they do not even have uh uh the national hospital insurance fund uh, that insurance uh, reason being the uptake of insurance in this country is also low so unless uh somebody's hit hard after paying cash severally through fundraising and well wishers then now he he begins to pay uh for the cover so that the cover helps him but you know the cover also comes with uh, uh just uh the minimum uh package uh twice dialysis and uh, and monthly lab but then as we speak uh there is a crisis uh that nhf is not paying a private hospital and in fact, uh, just a month ago, uh, the, the private hospital uh, union uh, gave a notice that they will withdraw their services. So a crisis is also looming up mm. against that. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. All right, let's talk about some proactive steps that companies and kidney warriors can take uh, to prevent to prevent um, disruption of hemodialysis treatment. Number one, patient education. That's what we're doing right now, brother Moses. Patient education. It says dialysis companies can provide comprehensive education to patients about the importance of adhering to their treatment schedule, following dietary restrictions, and recognizing signs of potential complications. Also, empowering patients with knowledge. That's what we're doing right now. We're not the big company, but we're empowering warriors with knowledge can help them take an active role in their own care. That's all we've been talking about ever since starting the broadcast, Brother Moses, from the beginning. Not for us today, but when we started this broadcast of having people take uh proactive steps and advocating uh for their treatment and, and playing an active role in their own care um do you see that in 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 east uh in kenya i was going to say east africa but do you see that among warriors there brother moses others taking active role in their care well um uh, it, 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 there is no emphasis on education it's just uh, quite passive whenever uh, you are having treatment and even uh, some dialysis units do not have the time 
they do not have the luxury of telling you uh, or educating you but others they do they try but then it is quite passive they don't lay emphasis because i don't know could it it could be because of our busy nephrologist or or because of uh, 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 the the starver of overwhelmed uh, you know there are so many factors yes i agree and i'm looking at some thank you guys for commenting uh, uh dad vice says uh even for him you know he's a kidney warrior as well uh he says avoiding treat uh, affording treatment medications and doctor visits when i retire worries me even with good insurance so it's starting to be an issue over here too brother moses uh and foster says uh that is the most important thing probably patient education and then she follows up and says patients should always be talked to and not at and and i definitely agree with that uh with that statement and so um this is why advocates like myself brother moses dad vice tv snap back to reality hope with jonathan uncle jim and, and many more people, if I didn't name you, I'm sorry, that's out there talking about kidney disease or their experience or uh, interviewing people about this because this education is important when it comes to this disease because there's so many facets to it. And, and as they say, it's not a one size fit all. What Brother Moses may go through, Dad Vice not going to go through, vice versa. And so uh, this is where the empowerment comes in. Shows like this, Dad Vice TV, Snap Back to Reality. I mean, I'm sorry, Snap Back to Life. I'm thinking about the song, and she knows what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, Hope with Jonathan, Uncle Jim. This is all for the empowerment and education. So when it's time to um, face these challenges that you may face, whatever they are pertaining to dialysis or kidney disease, then you may know what steps to take or just how to um, handle the situation. Um, number two, Companies can be proactive with regular equipment maintenance, which most are. But see, a lot of warriors don't know, especially here in the United States. Now, I'm not sure how they do it in Kenya. But here in the States, you may have a biomedical guy that covers not just one, not just two, but three centers. And those center, you may have one center that's 15 chairs, one that's 24 chairs, and another one that's, say, 24 chairs. Now, look at all those machines. One person. 24, 24, it's 48. You add on the 15, that's 63. And you, know, you got one person trying to do preventive maintenance on 63 machines. And also responsible for other stuff at three units. So dialysis companies should ensure that all dialysis machines, water treatment systems, and other equipment undergo regular equipment uh, maintenance and quality checks to minimize the risk of malfunction during treatment sessions. I can't tell you how many times a machine malfunctioned 
while our patient was on and we had to take them off and change the machine. Brother Moses, has have you ever experienced that? Oh, yes, it does happen. Um, uh, the machine just malfunction without giving any notice. And then uh, you have to wait. Uh, maybe uh, uh, a patient finish, then you, you are on all the other machine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me read this comment. M. Foster says, always question and make them explain until you understand. Even if it is, uh, or even if it may seem confusing, it is important to know because majority of the days you are home off of dialysis. And, and I agree. I agree. Uh, number three, very important. And, and Brother Moses, we always talk about this. Emergency preparedness. Emergency preparedness. Both patients and dialysis companies should have contingency plans in place for power outage. Now, most dialysis units do have a contingency plan because they have to have it. Uh, uh, so these companies and, and, and patients should both have uh, contingency plans in place for power outages, transportation issues, and other unforeseen disruptions. This may include having backup power sources, as we talked about the generator, transportation assistance, and communication protocols in case of emergencies. And so, Brother Moses, are there any contingency plans in place uh, if something was to happen for dialysis? Um, you know, if something was to take place that disrupted services, are there any contingency plans in place at your facility that you know about? Yes. Uh, I've seen uh, my unit has got uh, a backup generator uh, that uh, is uh, automatic. It, it's automatic once there is a blackout or power surge, the, the generator just kick off and uh, supplies uh, the much needed energy. Mm -hmm. All right, that's, that's good to know. And I'm glad that they do have that in place uh mm -hmm. for you guys but others uh, do not have elsewhere in other units they might not have it mm. and that's mm -hmm. probably to save on money yes yes and in false i agree with you uh dad vice uh definitely has excellent help and information as well um so number four they can be proactive in staffing and training. Okay. Now, this is a tricky one because it's very hard to, to hire someone and know their background and if they're going to make it or not. Because you got to hire somebody and they think they can do the job and end up not standing on business. Dallas's company should prioritize adequate staffing levels and ongoing training for their medical personnel to ensure that patients receive consistent and high quality care. Again, we got to find the people to apply. better pay and not trying to just get the bottom line. Brother Moses, how do they uh, train and staff in Kenya or at your facility? Um, um, in Kenya as a whole, uh, 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 
Kenyatta University Hospital and University of Nairobi trains uh, uh, trains the staff. But then uh, that training is uh, 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 is meant to uh, to fill in the gap that is there within the public sector. Now, uh, if one gets a deal of being employed in in a government hospital, then she has no business in finding work at uh, uh, a private sector where uh, uh, there, there is unforeseen future. Uh, but then now the private hospital also uh, trains through a pre apprenticeship. Uh, that is uh, training on the job I've seen. Uh, so uh, um, they train their staff maybe using other other already acquainted uh, staff to you know uh, to take care of dialysis. Yes. So uh, when it comes to training, uh, some of the private facilities are really uh, uh, lacking. Uh, uh the much needed uh uh training qualification uh, yes but then however there are well established uh a private sector that really gives quality training and they also hire uh qualified uh renal nurses okay yes great great all right, let's move and of on. course, you know, we have we have other unscopeless businessmen who wants to capitalize on uh, on capital uh, on profit. So they wouldn't mind taking anybody who can provide dialysis. You are put and she, one ask you how many hours do you go? Oh, four. Okay, four. Then he's go she, she or he go back. It go, goes back to uh, a WhatsApp chat, you know, and then when when you are done, you are removed. <laughs> so uh, those are challenges we have we've seen on uh, other uh, dialysis units. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, number five: patient support services, offering support services such as social work uh financial counseling and transportation assistance uh can help address non-clinical barriers that may lead to treatment disruption for patients now i know here in the united states uh they pretty much could get somebody a ride to dialysis um they do have social work here and uh at least some Um, offerings to financial assistance, such as uh, kidney foundation, places like that. But in Kenya, are there any such uh, things as support services, Brother Moses, like having a social worker? Or I know you mentioned that there wasn't a social worker in your unit. Uh, financial counseling or transportation issue i mean assistance does any of this exist they exist at your own cost they exist yes at your own cost so in other words uh, uh, most of us do not uh, are not in a position to afford them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for most so so you're telling me your clinic has a social worker, but in order to use that social worker, you have to pay out of your pocket. No, we don't have a social worker. Uh, you book an appointment to any non-social worker or to any uh, any any specialty that you need, including a nutritionist, uh, uh, maybe a urologist, uh, name it. You pay for it and you go where it is available and most of them have clinics private clinics so uh 
they are not within the facility. The facility provides really minimum, purely dialysis. Mm. Mm -hmm. Got you. So anything else that you have to do or services that you need outside of that, you responsible for finding it on your own? Oh, yes. Absolutely true. Uh, anything other than that, you need to find it on your own. Mm -hmm. For example, there are people who have never seen a nutritionist since they started dialysis. It's very common and rampant. Uh, there are people who do not know uh, uh, who uh, uh, maybe, uh, I mean, just name it any, any or social worker for that case. Mm. Nothing like that. You have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure if you heard a super chat. I never heard of it, but are you able to to raise uh, donations or funds to help with the with the cost? Uh, uh, not just uh, you, but anyone over there that's dealing with these challenges, these financial challenges. Yes, they, the, the, uh, there is flexibility, much more flexibility for anyone, anywhere to raise funds for such cause. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, the last one where companies and, and kidney warriors can be proactive in um, preventing this disruption is communication and feedback. Uh, establishing open lines of communication between patients and dialysis companies can help uh, identify and address potential issues before uh, they lead to disruption. Okay. Encouraging patients to provide feedback on their experiences can also help dialysis companies improve their services. Um, and uh, Brother Moses, what do you think about that? Offering oh, feedback? yes. Uh, the, the, uh, Brother Steve, actually, this is where we are failing as a patient because, um, uh, you know, most patients are attached to maybe their doctor or their nurses or 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 the facility itself unit uh, to the extent that uh, just speaking up if something is wrong or appreciating or, or recommending if something is nice but then when something is wrong they tend to to shut up because they fear that maybe the nurses or the i mean uh, or or they could be victimized they fear being victimized that oh mm. who said this against this unit so they fear they do not know that they must speak up to give the feedback the necessary feedback to improve on uh, the unit that is where actually we fail as patient brother steve but can't they do that anonymously to prevent that repercussion if they fear that yes if even if they do it that way still uh uh the you know uh the system could not work because uh sometimes it's uh it's a serious uh, uh allegation against the facility so they'll just skip they'll just shut up mm. uh, and you thinking that they are they are sorting it out yes so unless there's uh, uh maybe I normally suggest if if it were my liking, then we have uh, uh, just an independent body that uh, really uh, addresses uh, uh, the feedbacks mm -hmm. that patient give. I think that one it will work. But uh, uh, giving the feedback uh, to the perpetrator themselves to solve it, uh, it might not work. Because sometimes it could be, uh, 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 it could be, uh, say, for example, if 
if if you see uh, there is a shortcut that has been introduced during your treatment and uh, the facility as you know has, has agreed to uh, to to abide by that shortcut in treating you or giving out treatment then even if you raise your voice then it will go nowhere so yes uh, uh, that is uh, where we patient uh, we fail sometimes hmm all right uh let me uh talk about this comment right quick before we conclude the show uh m foster she said even here in america many crash into aki which stands for acute kidney injury and are given very little information which is true they are rushed to outpatient and just want to stay alive the depression and stress can be unreal and and that's true and even more i um i may talk about it later but i have an article in my phone that's i'm using it for TikTok. but where i talk about this where there was a study done where doctors say that people many people who have aki on dialysis could probably get off and and m foster is right uh brother moses uh you know we have patients here that may get acute kidney injury no you know no uh predis predisposition to uh to diabetes or hypertension maybe they had say cardiac surgery or something else happened and shut their kidneys down temporarily and now while their kidneys are, are trying to recover they may get put on dialysis to let them rest <clears throat> and then after a while the kidneys may recover and the doctors pull them off some people are left on dialysis and, and and forgot about so that is true about this with that acute kidney injury so um with that being said brother moses we're over by 18 minutes um any any parting words you would like to say to uh fellow kidney warriors around the world and in east africa oh yes uh to my fellow uh kidney warriors around the world uh the most important thing is to to keep the fight positively de despite all these challenges um, above all, raise your voice, be your own ambassador. Um, um, what we are giving here is too little. And we are, we are, only, uh, uh, we are only awakening you so that uh, you can keep the conversation with your doctor. And thank you very much for supporting this program. I am your co-host, Moses Kennedy your kidney ambassador. I can't hear you. All right. And I'd like to add to that and thank everyone who joined the broadcast and commented on the uh, show we definitely appreciate that um as again this topic is is very important because if you go to dialysis or your parents and something disrupts their treatment you need to know how to react and how to respond um to the situation and it could be anything as far as transportation power outage machine problems and a lot of times when patients go to dialysis 
and they're waiting in the lobby and they supposed to have been on 15 minutes ago. No one's came out to the lobby and told you what's going on. And the next thing you know, you have machine issues. Or even while you're on dialysis, you have machine issues and they got to switch you to another machine or uh, possibly have you come back. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I was muted. Thank you. So with that being said, um, please join us next week for a, another uh, informational broadcast. And we hope you have a great week, Brother Moses. Again, as always, thank you for showing up. I know it's a challenge sometimes going to dialysis twice a week and trying to maintain fluid balance. But uh, you showing up is, is much appreciated. Thank you. Absolutely. So, guys, with that being said, uh, we'll end the show. Again, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. And again, check us out next week, same time, same channel for another edition of Kidney Hub East Africa from uh, my brother Moses Kennedy and myself, Steve Belcher. Again, join us next week. We see you guys later and have a great evening. Hello, I'm Darren. We have breaking news. More than 600,000 Americans have kidney failure. While the number of people with kidney failure is enormous, the number of people with its precursor, chronic kidney disease, is staggering. An estimated 31 million Americans, or about 10% of the US population. Diabetes and hypertension cause two thirds of all cases of kidney disease. One out of every three Americans is at risk for kidney disease and kidney disease is now among the top 10 causes of death in the United States. In addition, nine out of 10 people with early to moderate kidney disease don't know they have it, putting their health in jeopardy. Are you at risk? For more information, contact urbankidneyalliance.org. The life you save may be yours.